friends and family, how are you? Uh, I welcome you to this broadcast and uh, I'm here in the park. I want to share with you something very important as I always do. You know, uh, it's all about this belief they give to us, this faith they give to us, this God they give to us, this Jesus they give to us. You know, all these lies they fed us and we I swallow them without verifying them, without proving them. So I will encourage you to prove what you believe, to verify it. Something happened to me and uh, for many years I have been believing what somebody told me because I respected the person as an elder or as an expert in what he's doing and uh, I believe him blindly. And uh, from, from 2012 to 2019, I've been believing that, thinking uh, maybe the person know better. Until I begin to discuss with my co-worker and uh, also I, I asked my current mechanic and he, he said, no, it's not true. What is that? When I was living with a Jamaican mechanic, when I was living in Montclair, so, because we live in the same place, we live in the same apartment. So, he said that, oh, before I go to, uh, uh, to the motor vehicle to, to inspect my car, I have to change the, <laughs> the, the, the engine oil. You know, I have to make sure the engine is running good. I believe him. Since 2012, I've been doing that till this year. So, I'm supposed to do my inspection. Uh, this month, which I did uh, yesterday, Tuesday. So, but before then, I, I, I was discussing with my co-worker like uh, two weeks ago. I said, oh, I have to go to to, uh, to motor vehicle to do inspection, but I have to change my oil. He said, he laughed. He laughed out loud. He said, that has nothing to do with um, inspection. He said, no, <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. I said, wow, that mechanic told me. He told me, you know, I have to change my life. I've been doing this for years. So, then the following day, I went to my mechanic, you know. I asked my mechanic also. He said the same thing. He said, no, motor vehicle, I mean, inspection. Inspecting your car, it does not require all that uh, oil change, no. He just tell me what, I, what, what they check, like the light and the other, maybe the brake, I think so. So, that's... When I, I said, okay, I have to verify it. So t yesterday I took my car to the motor vehicle without changing engine oil as I've been doing since 2012. So I went there, they, they inspected my car, it passed inspection, no, no problem, without oil changing. Then it's when I came out from the motor vehicle, I went uh, to the mechanic to change the oil. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I want you to know that's the same thing that happened to us, especially we that come from Africa that say we are Christians, we are Muslims, or we are Jews. The people gave us this religion. They give us these religions and they, we, we fail to verify them. The proof they give to us is the, the Bible or the Quran or Torah. They give us book as proof. It's ridiculous that many years, even many of us have been dying, believing that without verifying ourselves by ourselves what they taught us or what they gave to us we just believe what they say oh the bible is the word of god whatever the bible say is true we believe it without proof and even when we we've been praying or doing something according to the bible and it's not working yet we didn't ask question we just say okay maybe that's god's will that's how god wanted which god start with god Yes, they say when you wake up in the morning, start with God, or before you do anything, start with God. They, so which God are you starting with? The God you cannot see? Have you seen this God that you have been believing in? You say, oh, you don't need to see God. Then, if you don't need to see God, what makes you think you need to worship that God, or you need to believe that God? If God exists, as I've been saying, Feel free to know God. If, in fact, if God exists, you don't need to worship God. You need to relate with God. Yeah? You need to have relationship with God. If God exists, the same goes to Jesus. The same goes to Allah. The same goes to 
any God you believe in your religion, if that God exists, you won't be suffering the way you're suffering. You know, I, I used to make that post. Remember, I've been preaching Jesus and God from as a preacher from 2000, from 1993 to February 2018. I dropped everything religion, Christianity, or whatever belief have in God or Jesus you cannot see in February 2018. So, I used to preach that, oh my God is rich, he's so rich in grace that he, he sent his son to die for me, he saved me. Who taught us all that nonsense? They taught us that in, in Sunday school, they taught us that in Bible study, they taught us that in Bible school, they taught us that, that in theological school, they taught us that even in our houses, our parents who did not know better, they only believed what they were taught. So we, we just believe that without verifying them. Right? We're supposed to verify all this. I'm not asking you maybe to leave God or to leave Christianity or to leave Islam if it's working for you, right? You believe it's working for you, but you don't know it's not really working for you. Then but verify what you say you believe in. If you believe in God, that God is so rich, then why are you suffering? Why? Why are you not living in your village like myself? Here I am in Hillside, New Jersey. It's not my father's land. It's not my motherland. You know, so I get out from there because of suffering. I get out from there because, oh, I think uh, we know life is better as the, uh, uh, for over there. Right? Oh, I want to go to work. Uh, because people are working in Africa, but they're not getting paid. Many people, are, they, they never receive their salaries for many months, some of, some of them years. Even those that depend on pension, they are not getting it. So you see, when you say you are worshiping God and that God exists and that God can do all things, I want you to show me what He's doing for you. You just believe in it? No, you're supposed to verify it. You're supposed to know it. What is the question, my dear? I understand a lot, but who do I thank when you wake up in the morning and for say, nobody? Thank yourself. If you're looking for who to thank, thank yourself. You are the one that wake up in the morning. No God wake you up. That's another lie they taught us. Huh? Denise, they tell us, oh, when you wake up in the morning, thank God. Which why are you thanking God? Ghosts also wake up in the morning. Animals, it's natural thing. Waking up, sleeping, they are natural thing. It has nothing to do with the supernatural being you cannot see. I can wake you up also. Sometimes you set your alarm to wake you up. Do you thank your alarm? It's supposed to be, I, I rather thank my alarm for waking me up than thank God I have not seen. I, I can tell you, you know, sometimes you, maybe you have an appointment, you tell your wife or your husband or your children or your friend, you say, wake me up when it's so, so time. You see, so who do you thank in the morning when you wake up? Okay, thank the morning. You wake up in the morning. I will say thank yourself. That's better because you are the one that wake up. Some people do not. Some people have to wake up, but they keep sleeping. They say, "No, let me stay here." You wake up. No God wakes us up. Thank you. Uh, he said the sun wakes us up. Of course, the light, which is very good point. All right, so the sun wake you up, and you know we are connected to the sun. You see why I'm out here today, although it's a little bit uh, uh, wind, uh, breezy, uh, you know, chilly. But you see what I'm wearing, you know? But because the sun is shining, it's so, it's so true. No, I mean, it's so beautiful. Nobody can, can debate that God, uh, the sun does not exist. And your Bible says that uh, this, uh, God is the sun. God is not the sun. The sun is sun. The sun is not God. The sun is part of the nature. And we are part of that nature. So as I, I, I like uh, the... The answer that Ifani provided, the sun wake you up. So thank the sun. Will you do that? You say no. Just like uh, when somebody say God is the one that is there. I say okay. What what if I tell you that it it is um, dragon that wake that, that did that for you? He say no. It's not dragon <laughs> because he, he has been programmed. He has been he has been taught to believe when things are good, it is God. When things are bad, it is Satan. All those things are, are false. But I want to also make you understand that the reason why I, I keep hammering on this is because religion makes us to hate ourselves and love imaginary beings, unseen beings. You so, so you're supposed to love yourself. That's why I say when you wake up in the morning, thank yourself. 
thank yourself and thank anything that wake you up like the song wake you up thank you the song it's better to thank the song than to thank god or jesus you cannot see i can see the song i can enjoy the song he said oh but i cannot fix my eyes on the song right of course that's why they tell you now nobody can see god can anybody see the song you can see the song but you can't fix your eyes on it but they say fix your eyes on jesus when you fix your eyes on Jesus, just fixing your eyes on the sun, it will blind you. And that's what Jesus has, has done for all of us that used to believe or, or used to believe or still believe in him. He blindfolds you. You can't believe in Jesus and live right. You have to live delusional. You have to live like a slave. You have to live a fake life because it's a fake life. Faith is fake. So, I mean, you're supposed to know that. When you're talking about your safety also, I, I keep saying that. He said you walk by faith and not by sight. Try to cross the road. You say God protects you. God is the one that saves you. Try to cross the main road, the express road, with your eyes shut and let God save you. God cannot do that. Even with your eyes open, you, can just, you cannot just cross. You see vehicles coming, you step back because you love your life. You love yourself. So, you, we, we're supposed to know all this thing we keep saying, we are believing God, I believe in Jesus, I believe God. There's no one thing you can tell me that God has done for you. No single thing. God has not done anything for us. You say, oh, God created heaven and earth. Which God are you talking about? They have about 4,200 gods in the world. Which God? Huh? So, you're supposed to know that they lie to us. And the best way to find out whether they lie to you or tell you the truth is to verify it, prove it, reason with it, ask questions. Yes, I challenge you, I double dare you to ask questions about your belief and you begin to open your eyes. You are the one that will open your own eyes. No God is opening your eyes. Just as no devil can shut your eyes, you are the one that have the power to open your eyes, to save yourself, to deliver yourself, to keep yourself alive. He said, but are you the one that give yourself life? No. My parents gave me life, just as your parents gave you life. Have you seen God created anyone since you are, you are, you are born, since, since you have been alive? If God created Adam and Eve, as they said, God will have continued creating people. But God never created Adam and Eve. That story is bogus, it's nonsense, it's for a folklore they just put in the Bible. Yesterday I also made that, uh, I made that video about, um, about, uh, um, you know, the sons of God. I, I say something about that in that, right? When you read Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, it talk about when the sons of God, you know, saw the daughters of men and saw they were very beautiful. And they chose, they saw, then they chose to marry them, right? That's what the Bible said. They called them sons of God because I was proving to us that in the beginning there was no Jesus. The Genesis of Jesus is the title of the video. You can look it up, though. It has some, um, uh, some stoppage because of uh, poor network that last night. So the sons of God, saw daughters of men that they were beautiful and they chose to marry them they chose the one them and they married them but in uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 14 he said that as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God so you see two sons of God in the Bible it don't supposed to be so those one in Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 who led them was it the spirit of God that led them to marry those daughters of men no they saw them and they what they chose to do that and that's normal thing in life you cannot say god lead you to marry anybody oh god is one that make no now nah. you see the person when you see a woman you love when you see a beautiful woman you say oh, i love this woman i would love to have this woman what do you do you choose to marry her you choose to have her then you begin to do what you're supposed to do without raping her so that's it's not but when when the church created the holy spirit they tell you it's only the holy spirit that will lead you if the holy spirit don't lead you you are not a son of god that's nonsense and you said the same god created me so and so if god created me why do i need the spirit of god to become sons of god uh, son of god 
if God created me, right? He gave back to me. Now, but let's just see it that way. The sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 were led by who? Nova. They were sons of God. They have the will and they have the mind to make decisions. When you see something, you, you decide whether you like it or not. Then you choose, you choose whether to have it or not. It has nothing to do with the Spirit of God. It has nothing to do with any God in the sky, with any God in the temple, with any God in any man or any woman. So you see the contradiction. You still believe that uh, God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sin. That's a lie. It's a lie they made up, you know, the churchmen made up for, to sell their New Testament. But I, I walked us through last night in that Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. Because that's where Christians always quote to justify that Jesus is the Son of God. But God never said He will send His Son. God had no Son in the beginning. According to Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. God was talking about the descendants of the woman. You see, and the, God never promised that He will send His Son to die for the sins of the world. The world never sinned against God. The Bible says Adam did. Then in the New Testament, they say that the world now inherited the sin of Adam and his punishment. You see how wicked these people are? Just to get you, just to make you believe their lies. They are now threatening you with sin and death. Oh, because you sin, you die. But Adam didn't die. As God said, which is why I say God is the liar. God is the real liar in the Bible. According to Genesis chapter 2, 16 and 17, and Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 12, God said the day they eat of this tree, they will die. The day they ate it, they did not die. So that's what makes him a liar. I'm not the one that called him that. His, his word and what happened about that made him that. When somebody tells you something is green and you look, it's not green, what is that person? That person lied. So God is the original liar according to the Bible. So you're supposed to not just believe something. Very, very, you, you see, the, like when, 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 when we are doing that argument, the other fellow was there. So the person, the Christian uh, or the believer that, that used that Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, I opened my, I was my, with my phone, so I just opened my Bible, pa, 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 just, uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. I read it. I said, you see, it was talking about the descendants of the woman. The seed of the woman. He was not talking about the seed of God. He was not talking about the descendant of God. He was not talking about the son of God. Read it yourself. Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. The problem many of us have, as, uh, 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 especially Africans, we don't read. Even when we read, we just read in passing because we already have something in, in mind. Oh, this is the word of God. So when you have that idea or that that mind in you that the Bible is the word of God, then you will never understand anything you are reading there. You will just be believing them. You just believe them. You will not know the truth. That's why they always they always go to Bible school, go to I mean Bible study, go to Sunday school always learning but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth because they believe oh yeah I, I, when you open the bible they say when you open the bible you god begin to speak that's nonsense a god that is waiting for you to open a book or for you to pray or for you for, for him to speak or to do anything is not worthy of your belief or your faith think about it if that God really exists, he'll be speaking to you directly. You don't need any pastor. You don't need any evangelist. You don't need any prophet. You don't need anyone between you and God. You don't need any mediator. Whether you say it's Jesus Christ, you don't need it. Okay, I also asked that guy a question. Before Jesus, you say that Jesus, you know, he, he, he became man. I said, okay, what was Jesus before he became man? Are you saying Jesus was God? If you said Jesus was God before he became man, that means he was God also on the cross. He died on the cross. So God dies. So when you say God never dies or God cannot die, you're lying. Jesus died. And Jesus, you believe Jesus was God before he became man. So uh, you're supposed to verify all that. Use your common sense, my people. Verify it. Don't just believe it. Oh, because somebody said it because, oh, you throw, you believe that man of God. Just like what happened to me. I believe, I, I believe that mechanic. As an elderly man, you know, we always play. I 
believe his word. I believe he know what he's doing because he's a mechanic. I believe he know better than me. But he lied. Maybe he lied because he think before I go, he's the one that will do the oil. Of course, he's the one that do my oil change that time. So I have to pay him. So he lied now to make money off me. All right? That, is it not the same thing going on in the church? The pastors are lying to you. The priests, they are lying to you. The imams, all those people in the name of God, in churches, in, in, in mosques, or in temples, they are lying to you. They are not telling you the truth. You, how can you say you love the truth while you are going to church? Church itself is a place of lie. It's built on lie. All of them. You say, oh no, but Jesus said to Peter, on oh, this road I will build my church. Jesus said he will build his church. He did not say any man, any other person will build it. He said he himself will build it. So why the ones that are building now? You can say you, you love the truth and you are going to church. You can say you love the truth and you are going to mosque. Those places are dungeons of lies. That is a building of lies. That is a place of lies. They tell you lies. Oh, God will answer your prayer. God will bless you. I love that video I shared earlier in one of my Facebook profiles. <laughs> a pastor was preaching on stage. One angry guy came after him. He ran. <laughs> and at the backstage, you see the, uh, the neon light. They are Jesus. <laughs> he, ran for, he ran for his life. Think about it. If this God or Jesus insists that, that, that they have been preaching, do you think they are, they'll be needing all those ushers in the church? Those bodyguards working with them, those people with arms working with them. Think about that. If God is, they won't be even raising money from you because God will provide it. But they tell you, God will provide for you and take offering and tithe from you. But when it comes to you, they don't take, give you. If God is the one that provides, why are they asking you for tithes and offering? Verify all that nonsense they told you. I used to believe that also, but I dropped them. I dropped them. Also, something came in mind. When I was um, uh, reading, like, uh, when I was thinking about uh, Isaiah chapter 9, you know, where I say that uh, unto us a son was given, unto us a child was born, right? He shall be called. I, I want to walk us there. Let, let, let me see. Mm. Let me see how, uh, 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 let us walk through that Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9. You know, and see what all those things they say Jesus will be called, and see if that's what Jesus really is according to the New Testament, and see that there's no Jesus even in that Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, verse, verse 6. He said, For unto us a child is born. He said, Unto us a child is born. All right? So, not God. God is, God is not born. When you say Jesus is God, and Jesus was born of Virgin Mary, according to the Bible, that's a lie. He did not say unto us, God is born. He said unto us, a child is born. Read your Bible, verify what they said. If he said unto us, a child is born, it's a child. And he did not say that child is Jesus. He said a child is born. And, the, and the, unto us, a son is given. He did not say a son of God is given. He did not say the son of God. So those, those of you that say that, no, Jesus is the son. I am a son. No, he said, unto us a son is given. He said, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Which government? He said church government. The church government is not upon uh, the, uh, the other shoulder, but upon the founders. The one that founded, if you are a winner's member, your church, the government of your church is upon Oyedebo. If you belong to RCC, that's a redeemed Christian, whatever, you know, it's upon the whoever is in charge now, that's Adeboye or somebody else has taken over, or whoever is the founder. Any, every government, whether you say it's a spiritual government, it's upon those that found it, and there's no such thing as a spiritual government. You say, and the government, it is not say a spiritual government. You say, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called. That's what I want us to walk through now. His name shall, will be called what? Wonderful. Is there? <laughs> he say his name will be wonderful. Is wonderful a name? Think about it. Wonderful. Oh, this is wonderful. It's a wonderful day. 
But he's saying his name will be called wonderful, right? Is Jesus wonderful? No way. He cannot do a thing in your life. Even as we speak, Jesus cannot help you. We have proven that. Right? You see how many people that they were killed on Easter Sunday? They were calling on Jesus. Many Christians have been massacred in Nigeria. And the government is upon whose shoulder? Yet, Jesus haven't come to show any wonder in their life. Rather, they keep wandering in the wilderness. Um, believing in this um, idiot they call Jesus. This, this fictional character they call Jesus that, 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 that does not exist. He saying his name will be called what? Cancelor. How many people call Jesus wonderful or counselor in your, even in your Bible? The Jesus you believe in, is Jesus counselor? Do you call Jesus counselor? <laughs> Do you? Remember <laughs> what I'm reading about the names they call Jesus, which they use. Then the third one is the one they use to make Jesus God. He said, mighty God. So he said, mighty God. But if you read what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, he said he's almighty. But this place said Jesus. I mean, this place said the son. A son. A son will be called uh, mighty God. Not almighty God. And Jesus never say he's God. In your Bible, there's no place Jesus say he's God. Then Christian will jump in John chapter 10 verse 30. Excuse me. Oh, he said, I and my father are one. <laughs> so... He did not say he's God. He said, I and my father are one. Did Jesus say anywhere <laughs> that I am the God, I am God? No, he said, I and my father are one. Which I can say, I and my father are one also. We are one human being. So if you believe Jesus is a, uh, God is a spirit, if Jesus said God, he is one with God, he means there are spirits, spirit being, right? But there does not exist. You cannot see a spirit. So you saying that spirit exists and Jesus and God are one. Jesus, you're making Jesus a spirit. Could Jesus say he's not? In Luke chapter 24, 36 to 43, you can read it yourself. Jesus never said he's a spirit. Jesus said he has flesh and bones like you and I. So you're supposed to see him. So making Jesus God, because you read in Isaiah chapter 6, well, chapter 9 verse 6, that he say. Uh, a son, where he did not mention Jesus, a son will be called Mighty God. Many people have been called Mighty God before Jesus came. Many people have been called Almighty God before Jesus came. So Jesus is not the person, first person to be called God. Even to today, you have seen some people that have risen as if they are God. So calling somebody Mighty God doesn't make that person God. If Jesus is Mighty God, you're supposed to see him. But Jesus said he's almighty God, contrary to this, he said the Son. So this place has nothing to do with Jesus that you believe in. It has nothing to do with the Jesus of Christianity, the Jesus in Quran, the Jesus in Bible, or Yehoshua, whatever you call him. It has nothing to do with him. He said the Son, a Son will be called mighty God, not God, not almighty God, but mighty God. And Jesus never said he's God. Jesus said he's almighty. He did not put God there. According to Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. And Jesus himself said he's, a son of, he's the son of God. Not a son. According to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. So read with your brain. Hear what he said again. A son will be called everlasting father. Think. A son will be called everlasting father. So God is a son, is that what you're saying? So somebody asked, uh, that, that guy asked that guy, he said, so are you saying Jesus and God are the same person? He said, no, you know, Jesus is a son, God is the father, they are not the same person. No, that's crap, confusion that religion brings. He said, a son, not the son of God, a son will be called everlasting father. Is there anywhere Jesus said he's everlasting father? No. Even when the Jews tried to stone him for saying, you know, his father walks and he walk also. He said, uh, why do you say I'm blaspheming? When you read uh, John chapter 10, he said, why are you saying I'm blaspheming? 
You say, because I say I am the son of God. That's what Jesus said. Jesus never said he is everlasting father. Man, Bible is full of shit. It's full of lies. All this nonsense they gave to us. And we just read it blindly. Oh, Jesus is God. Jesus, my father. You call he says he says he's the son of God. And you're calling him your father at the same time. You say it's a spiritual thing. You cannot understand it. That's stupidity. It has nothing to do with spirituality. Okay, so if Jesus, you say Jesus is the everlasting father. Remember, Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 was not talking about Jesus that you worship. He was not talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was not talking about Jesus, the son of Mary. He was not talking about Jesus, the son of Joseph. He was not talking about Jesus that you believe in. He said that everlasting father, a son will be called. A everlasting father does not mean a son is the everlasting father. <clears throat> Maybe he's prophesying like the stupidity about people calling a son a father. Maybe uh, when I was growing up, uh, some people, when they come to our, to our house that time, uh, I think when I was a teenager, so they would think my father was my brother. They would come and ask me, where is your brother? <laughs> I say, no, it's my father. You know, because they say I look like him. Uh, they thought I'm uh, a brother to him. But think about it. What, what makes you call a son father? What makes you do that? But that's what we believe. Oh, Jesus is my Father. Oh, Father Jesus. And you don't think, yet you believe there is Trinity. Oh, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, and, and, and you are even baptized in that. They baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. That's nonsense. If Jesus is the Son of God, and there is God, His Father, why are you saying there is one God? You, and you are condemning your African ancestors with that nonsense. You say they have many gods. They are, of course, there are many gods that men made up. Men made up all those gods. There is no one God. Even you that believe in the God of the Bible, it, uh, support in many gods. When you say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, what that makes you? It makes you a hidden. It makes you a pagan. It makes you somebody that believes in multiple gods. So when you say, no, I believe in one God, you know you're lying. Because if you believe in one God, you won't have Jesus. If you believe, if you believe in one God, all of you will believe in, we have one God. But this one, you say you have one, one God. His name is Jehovah. His name is Allah. His name is Yahweh. His name is Jesus. Confusion everywhere. So why, if you're in your right sense, in your right sense you don't call a son a father. You call a son a son, and you call a father a father. That's what they say happened to you know Greece, Greece, uh, Greece or Greek, Greek people. They came to Africa as students, then they become father. They become father of medicine. When they came to Africa to learn about medicine, then a, a student become the the father. The father. That's nonsense. Making a son. A father is ridiculous. Also, here the, another one. He said, he will, the, "A son will be called what? Prince of Peace." It's ridiculous for you to say Jesus is a Prince of Peace. Why Jesus himself said no? He did not come to bring peace. He said when he was born, they said peace to earth. Nonsense. Men put those nonsense in your Bible. Jesus never said he brought peace. If Jesus is a Prince of Peace, there will be peace everywhere Jesus enter. But read. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 34 to 37, you see, when Jesus comes into a family, he brings division. He brings Obara, he brings scatter. He scatter father and, and son, scatter mother and daughter, scatter mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. He said, I came to bring fire. He said, how I wish is already kindled. Jesus came to bring fire, to scatter, to burn family, to divide family. And you say he's a prince of peace. If Jesus is a prince of peace, every family that Jesus is in is supposed to be peace. But today, no, there is no peaceful family. Even Christian family, they are not peaceful. You cannot find peace in Christian family. You cannot find peace in Muslim family. There is no peace in the world. I bet you tell you, oh, Jesus is the prince of peace. Hey, God is God of peace. Where is the peace? You say, yeah, God say, let there be light, and there was light. Okay. How about peace? How about love? How about joy? How about prosperity? Why can't God declare this? Let there be prosperity, and everybody have prosperity. 
But the men that created that God, they are evil men. They tell you, God is God of peace. He will give you peace. Why they are the one giving you trouble? They give you trouble and tell you, don't worry, God will bring you peace. They are evil men. Prince of peace, Jesus is not prince of peace. He comes to divide. He said he did not come to bring peace. He came to bring division. That's what Jesus said. Jesus is prince of division. So Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 has nothing to do with Jesus. You can verify it. Don't just believe it. Verify Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 with what Jesus said. But hear where I'm going to. Hear what he said. Of the increase of his government and the peace, there will be no end. You know that's a lie, right? Here, yeah. he said, Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Where is the throne of David that Jesus is sitting on? Nowhere. Because they made up that nonsense. And Jesus is not the root, of, is not from the root of David. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me show you how it goes. When you read your Bible, in Israel, lineage, generation, or genealogy is, is recorded or is, uh, is acknowledged or, or is, um, is accepted through male, through man, not through woman. Not through woman, right? So somebody to come from the, uh, from the root of David, it should not come from a woman, which they call Mary. It should come from a man. He's supposed to be Joseph, but lo and behold, Joseph is not the real father of Jesus. Jesus is not from the root of David. A woman does does not be the root. It's not the root. The woman is not. The woman is not the one that they count family line. True, in Israel, where we believe the Bible says. So Mary, who impregnated Mary, they say God. So it's not. David is not any man from the root of David. So you can verify it yourself. If Jesus is from the root of, of, of David, then you're supposed to show us his father who is from that lineage. No one. You say Mary. Mary, Mary is a woman. And he was not impregnated. He was not impregnated by anyone from the lineage of David. So when you say Jesus came from the generation of David has said it's a lie. They just made that up. Think about it. And remember, I've just read Isaiah chapter 9, 6 and 7. He talked about a child and who was given as a son. He never mentioned Jesus there. Who created Jesus? That's where he's supposed to, he's supposed to know the genesis of Jesus. The genesis of Jesus was at, at the council of, uh, of Nicaea in AD 325. You can verify it. Google it. If you hate Google, ask yourself, when was the name Jesus first mentioned in the world? Begin to ask questions. Ask your pastors. Ask your bitch or your priest. If they will tell you the truth, but they won't tell you the truth. They will tell you, just believe what we are saying. Just believe the word of God. The word said, the word of God. The scripture says, of course, is the word of God because somebody made it so. My word is word of God too. What I'm saying, what I'm saying, because I am God that exists. You are God that exists also. But you have to verify whatever you believe. You have to verify whatever they tell you, even what I'm saying. Verify what I'm saying. Don't just swallow it. Swallowing it will never solve any problem. Swallowing it will just create more problems. You see, like, when you don't choose something and just swallow it, it creates problem to you. Have you seen some snake? They swallow something that is so big. You know, the thing is, they can't move. They have to vomit it out. That's how it's supposed to be. Everything religion has taught you, vomit it out, because it's not doing you any good. Important days um, in our history. The first council of Nicaea is... Yeah, a lot of them, council, council. If there is God, why do men keep having council? Why? They have council, they come up, some bishops or some leaders, like uh, in Anglican, they have synod. Uh, I think uh, Roman Catholic still have council, right? Council of bishops and all that. Men just gathered and make up something, tell you this is the will of God, this is the word of God. You know, they made somebody a pope and said, that's the vicar of Christ, that's the mouthpiece of God. You believe that nonsense? 
because men made up that. Huh? They keep even the Bible. They keep revising it. There is something I say I will post. I mean, let me let me let me uh, maybe do it right here before I post it. Like when you see some um, some translations, right? Like the, this new um, King James version. When he write about Psalm, he says Psalms, like the book of Psalm. He says Psalms, but some translation have Psalm, no S. Is it the word of God? Is it supposed to be part of the what you call the word of God? Why Psalms? Some translation says Psalm like, okay, this is uh, Luke in James Version. He says Psalms. Let me check um, contemporary English version. Oh no. He said no. Well, mm -hmm. this one have um, Psalms. Mm -hmm. So why should some have Psalm and some have Psalms? Where is NIV? Let me check NIV. You have to verify everything, not some. Everything we have to. You see, new in, new international version have some. When you go to your Bible, if you have King James version and the new international version, you believe these things are word of God. Why do they put some in new international version, but in King James version or new King James version they put psalms. Thank, thank, thank my people. These people lie to us. We have to verify all that. Whatever they taught you, whatever they, 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 they make you believe. Okay, verify it. Don't just believe it. Don't just swallow it. You have to show you have a, 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 a mind of yours. You can think for yourself. As I've been saying, am I asking you to think like me? No. Am I, am I asking you to follow me? No, I'm asking you to think for yourself and follow yourself. You cannot lie to yourself. You see, when we want to ridicule somebody, we say stop lying to yourself. Because that is the worst lie you will ever tell. Lying to yourself. Tell yourself the truth. Has God done anything for you except what you believe he has done? Has Jesus done anything for you except what you believe he has done? A guy, we call an evangelist Agwebe, uh, Agwebe from my town. He took my post and shared it, and saying that he don't believe, he never see a man living or dead that mock God and Jesus as I do him. He was saying, he said negative things about me. I just laughed. I know that guy when he was doing Njima, that's like traditional music, like Perikoma, right? Now, recently, he became an evangelist, that's as normal as we do, which I also did. I don't blame him for that. But he coming after me, I said, listen, number one, I did not speak against him as a person. I never speak against my people. Unless when it comes to religion, I tell them that religion is evil. That religion makes them stupid. That religion makes them fools, just as he made me before I set myself free. But see this person now from my own town, he picked that war against me, saying that I am demon possessed and all that. I said, okay, even in your Bible, they call Jesus mad, madman and demon possessed. The same Jesus you're worshiping. But I'm the one now you're calling the same thing. Guess what? You see, you are putting me in the place of Jesus. Because Jesus was called a madman in the Bible. Jesus was called demon possessed in the Bible. I asked him, why do you always see demons that does not exist? Both you are God and demons. They don't exist. They are the same thing. Imaginary beings. Wake up my people and stop believing those things they gave to us. Verify them. Begin to verify them. If you can verify them, you will see how easy it is to be free. Religion is like addiction, but I, I was also addicted to marijuana and uh, whiskey, all that. But the day I quit, I did not struggle. In 1992, Gen uh, uh, 1992 December, that was the last day of 1992, that was 1993 January, boom. 
I quit smoking and drinking at a spot. Nobody, I did not, I did not, I did not even, you know, uh, struggle to quit as some people are struggling today. Right? So, yes, people, verify what you believe. Do research. Do your own research. You don't need to go to any school to know it. You don't need to go to even any library. Use your brain. Your brain is greater than any computer in this world. Your brain is greater than any library in this world. Your brain is, is, better, is greater than any God, any grace of God. Your brain is sufficient for you. Use your brain. Think. You're telling me to believe in a God that God has done what I have. didn't see any God do anything. You say God is the one that gives you the brain. Well, recently I've been asking people, when is your creation day? You have your birthday. You believe your parents get back to you on a certain day. And you are celebrating it every year. And you believe also that God created you. Tell us when God created you. Tell us the date. You cannot. So it's time you wake up and face the truth. I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to question everything you believe. Don't just believe it. Because the truth is natural. The truth is nature. Nature is truth. Everyone agree with that. But when it comes to lie, it's against nature. It's against the truth. Truth is factual. You can prove it. But lies, you cannot prove it. You have to be lying to defend a lie. But no matter how you lie, you can never demonstrate it. Nobody can demonstrate their faith. Have you seen anyone demonstrate their faith? No way. You see your pastors, they are buying private jets. They can't demonstrate their faith in Jesus Christ as Philip did. Philip disappeared and appeared in another city. Philip did not need any private jets to travel to go and preach. No, read it, Acts chapter 8. The Spirit of the Lord took him. The Ethiopian eunuch did not see him again. Then he appeared in another city. That's how it's supposed to be if the Holy Spirit exists. But they lie to you. They say, oh, we are led by the Spirit of God. How can the Spirit of God lead you to buy private jet instead of leading you to produce them? You cannot produce, produce private jet, but you rob poor people. You do some business. You raise money to buy private jet, and you say you are doing the work of God. A God that cannot produce a, a thing. A God that cannot give you brain to make anything. Think about it. People made all this, right? People made all this. You can carry them wherever you go. Not any God. And these people that made this thing don't believe in that God you believe in. They don't believe in that God like that. Some of them may still be in their parents' religion, but mm -mm. for them to make this, they have to get out of that box. I don't have any box. I'm not in any box. I'm outside every box that men made. And religion is the most dangerous box that men made. And I've delivered myself from it. And I'm encouraging you to do the same. Deliver yourself. So, you see, when you deliver yourself from religion, one of the things that will happen to you, you will begin to save yourself a lot of money. Yes. You will be saving yourself a lot of money because you'll be using your brain now. You'll be thinking what I'm doing. Remember, it doesn't matter what you achieve in this world. You will end up dying one day. No matter what you say you are, or you are a celebrity, or you are whatever, you're going to die one day. And you will not live with anything you're bragging about in this world. And I keep saying that, I, this may be my last time in this world. I may die tonight. I may die right now. So what is that thing you are bragging about? What is that thing you think you have that makes you so special? That's why I'm upset with what is going on in the world. Nobody's supposed to be suffering in this world. It's a wicked world. Men made it wicked. And it's a wicked world because the God they tell you exists does not exist. Where is that God in your time of need? Verify your faith. Verify your belief. Verify your religion. How many of you know the, 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 the foundation of your religion? You say it doesn't matter. All I know I believe. Leave me to believe whatever I want. Did they leave our ancestors to believe whatever they wanted? These people kidnapped our ancestors. These people raped our ancestors. These people killed our ancestors. These people enslaved our ancestors. And you have the gut to tell me to shut up, to stop talking against any religion. Religion that really destroy us. 
we are divided today. That's why I made that post. I said the missionaries, they were more evil than the enslavers. Because enslavers used chain to hold our people. They kidnap our people by force. But they send the missionaries to, to enslave our people mentally. Giving you God to keep you down. Don't, don't revolt. No, don't, don't worry. God will deal with the wicked. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. You know, those that slap you on, the, on, on one cheek, turn the other one. They use them to keep you in mental slavery. But you have the power and the time now to deliver yourself from that mental slavery. You believe, what, what, you're supposed to believe in fairness, not in forgiveness. Because when we, when we walk in fairness, we will live as human beings, not in forgiveness. Oh, you, you do bad thing to me, you want me to forgive you. No, you know it, but it was bad thing before you do that. But if you know I will retaliate, you won't try it. Just what I'm, I'm been saying in the world today. Why do you see Muslims killing people anyhow? Because the other people are not retaliating. You see, they can't, they can't mess with Americans uh, the way they mess with other people because they know Americans have weapons. Americans will come after them. You're supposed to think, my people, verify what you believe. But no matter what you believe, if you believe in that God they call Allah or Jesus or Yahweh or Jehovah or, or whatever they call that God, ask yourself, where was that God during slavery when they came and invaded your land? If not for slavery... I won't be in America today. I will be in my village enjoying life better. If not for slavery, if it's not for slavery, well, it was not for slavery. We all, we have this nonsense. They call Jesus, or they call Jehovah, or they call Allah, or they call Yahweh. We will have ourselves. We will value brotherhood, not neighborhood. We begin to understand life as it really is because our ancestors had the original knowledge about life as it's supposed to be. And I'm encouraging you to do the same. And verify, verify whatever you believe and live life normally. You have the power to do that. Let no one tell you otherwise. Thank you. Peace.